investment banking can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But typically in the industry, if you work in the investment field, whether it's um, uh, being a portfolio manager on the buy side, trading, sales, all of those things that are involved with investing can be lumped into investment banking. More traditional view or a more narrow view is what you would call the corporate finance aspect, which is including really raising capital for a company and even more specifically on the equity side. So you might have debt capital markets, you might have equity capital markets, but what, what, what the traditional narrow view of it is, in, of investment banking would be uh, doing things like IPOs, follow-ons, uh, private placements, um, mergers and acquisitions, things of that nature. That's the very narrow scope. Capital markets, generally speaking, are the entities within the firm or the departments within the firm that will help facilitate the raising of capital in one form or another in investing. So you're looking at, in the capital markets, you would have, typically there's, uh, in the equity side, there's about four legs to that stool. You have investment banking, you have research, you have institutional sales and trading and syndicate, which is the distribution arm. So that's really kind of what capital markets is. Now you have debt capital markets, which has the same type of uh, things as the equity capital markets does, and they'll raise debt instead of uh, equity. So those are the main, the main areas of function. So we touched on uh, research. Investment banking is the team that actually goes out, puts together the transaction and raises the capital or does the merger. The syndicate department is the distribution arm which works with the street side and helps distribute street deals and helps get the street involved in the company's deals. And then the institutional sales and trading department trades the security and also sells the security, helps sell the security to other investors. And then research, of course, uh, at the end of the day, will write research on, on those deals or, or on other individual companies. So the skill set on the banking side, a lot of it's the same in terms of doing analysis and so forth, but a lot more of it is hand-holding the clients, walking the clients through what this means. A lot of times raising capital for a company is sometimes people view it as the most important thing in the life of the company. Uh, that's debatable, um, but, but many times that's the watershed moment where if a company is going public, uh, it opens a whole new world to them because now they have a currency. They can go and they can grow much faster. They can make acquisitions. They can hire more people. They can open more locations. They can do a lot of different things with that capital. So most of the C you're de usually dealing with the CEOs, the top level executives, CEO, CFO, and the board members. And many times these executives have never gone through this before. They have never been exposed to the capital markets. They don't understand what's going on. So it's your job to kind of coach them along on what to expect, how to do this, what they should expect from the uh, investors, what they should expect from the pricing, what, what's going to happen in the market. There's all kinds of things that happen. And then also you have to prepare them if the market uh, is acting strange, is this the right time to actually take that transaction out or should you wait? And there's other things that you have to worry about, for example, you never want to do a deal in August because everybody goes on vacation. And you're not going to get enough of the enough of a broad spectrum of investors to go to your meetings. So these are all the types of things that you have to help the company walk through. The analyst's job is to write research, of course, but that's the beginning. The next part, the very large value added part of their job is to go out and market it, go out and sell it, convince people that this is something that they should pay attention to. Now, when I say that, I'm not diminishing the quality of the research. The, we're, we're assuming that the quality of the research is extremely high and it's thorough and it's been vetted well. So that's like the, that's the price of admission. If you can't do that, you'll never get to the next level. So if you are able to do that and then you're able to market it and you're able to do those things, you interact and develop relationships with clients, where the clients want your advice. So if you happen to be an expert in a certain area and that client needs to know something and they can call you up and you're gonna give them a logical, good answer with some insight into it, that's where you're gonna excel. A lot of times people hear investment banking and they wanna know, they, they think they wanna go into it because uh, it's sometimes it, can be glamorized or 
Um, you'll hear about uh, movies like The Wolf of Wall Street or uh, or the movie Wall Street itself. Those are things I, I think are actually a disservice to the industry because those are that's the rare exception where those things take place and the regulators and the government are right to root those people out. They have no place in a business like this. Uh, you know, cheating, lying, and stealing, and those types of things, and, and acting immorally and unethically, th those are not things that the industry is built around. In, in every industry, from time to time, you have bad actors, or I should say bad characters, no pun intended. So that if that's your reference point, you're barking up the wrong tree, in my opinion. If that's what you think you're going into the business for, maybe you ought to think about a different career.